coming up on How Do They Do It? How do Mexicans make chewing gum that grows on trees? How do they forge a jaw-dropping super hook to land a hundred kilo shark? Ooh, what a fish. And how do they turn 50 million mini bricks into the remarkable models of Legoland? We take you around the world to show you how on How Do They Do It? More than 370 trillion sticks of chewing gum are consumed every year around the world. And most of them are made with synthetic rubber, the same stuff that's used to make car tires and rubber gloves. But deep in the Mexican rainforest, fine organic chewing gum is still being made as it was hundreds of years ago. So, how do they chew it? Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, an area rich in history, mystery and ancient ruins. The Mayans built massive pyramids here, practiced human sacrifice, and like nothing more than chewing gum. They've been making gum here for a thousand years. And deep in the Mexican rainforest, farmers continue to follow those ancient footsteps. For six months of the year, pickers like Pablo Chable and Arturo Novello enjoy a simple life, harvesting the trees. The gum they seek is called chicle, the chewable sap of the sapodilla tree. And their first challenge is to find the trees in a million hectares of dense tropical jungle. For all its beauty, the rainforest is a dangerous place. Hay que andar con cuidado porque acuérdate de la culebra que vimos ayer. Con las culebras ya ves que es peligroso ahorita. Calmado con el, el, los puercos, el jaguar. Hay que andar abusado porque aquí siempre están aquí en la selva, en el monte, ahí están guardados. It takes them over two hours to find a sapodilla tree. These extraordinary natural gum machines tower up to 30 meters tall. And from the scars on their bark, Arturo can tell how many times each tree has previously been tapped. Este árbol ya tiene 70 años. Este está bueno porque ya tiene 15 años que lo picaron, por eso tiene bastante resina. The gum giving natural marvel produces the latex as a defense response to protect itself when it gets cut. Using a super sharp machete, Arturo carves a zigzag run of two centimeter deep gashes into the trunk. These clever channels direct a flow of chicle down the tree to a canvas sack at its base. The problem is that these trees can grow to five times the height of a house. Luckily, Arturo isn't afraid of heights. Soga la puse así doble para que me aguante más y no se vaya a reventar. Y esto es para que no me resbale. And he sticks to the trunk like gum on a pavement. Sharp spurs hold him in place and the rope allows him to lean back, but not too far. Without a harness, one slip could be fatal. As he climbs, Arturo slashes his zigzag path, following the same pattern cut the last time this tree was harvested 15 years ago. And things become more challenging as the tree splits in two high above the jungle floor. It's too dangerous to go any higher, and he wisely makes his way back to solid ground. Where he's greeted by a stream of striking latex as it slaloms down the tree. Harvesting this special sap is a slow process, and Arturo leaves his bag overnight before joining Pablo to chew the fat and blow the froth of a couple of cold ones at their jungle crash pad. The next day, Arturo returns to pick up his bag. Esta ya está llena. La voy a quitar y ya me voy. Me voy al campamento. 
Each week, chiclet pickers like Arturo and Pablo generate about 40 litres of gum, which must be made into solid blocks to sell on. And the blocks must be free of impurities. There's no lab in the jungle, so the solution is to filter the resin through a fine mesh net. But it's still a long stretch from a block of chewing gum. A huge cauldron is filled with 25 litres of chicle and heated over a jungle fire. It's a job for two, and it can take four hours to transform this into something chewable. Si me detengo, se va a quemar. Y tengo que sacar la humedad. Overcooking will ruin the whole batch. Undercooking won't make for a good chew. Creo que ya está listo, Arturo. Chicle is sold in blocks. The trouble is that chewing gum, as any road sweeper will tell you, is sticky. Put this gum straight into a mould and you'd never get it out. The solution is to firstly store the moulds in a watering hole to keep them saturated and secondly to lubricate the sides with soap. Amazingly, it takes a matter of minutes to dry a block that will make over a thousand packets of gum. In nearby Zoo Laguna, chewing gum manufacturers Chixa are receiving a delivery of Pablo and Arturo's gum, fresh from the forest. The problem is that you can't tell the quality from the outside, so Alfonso Valdez Ruiz inspects each block with a pick. But to really establish the price, he has to take more drastic action. From its density, he can tell that this is high-class gum. The blocks are stored here, and many are sold to international customers across Europe and as far away as Korea, Japan and Singapore. But the locals aren't about to send it all abroad. 120 kilometres away in Chetumal, the Chixa company run a chewing gum factory of their own. First, they melt down their blocks of gum. Then, to remove any lumps, they pass the molten gum through an industrial-sized sieve. The problem is, the gum is still too hard for even a seasoned masticator and has all the flavour of rubber, which isn't much. So they add glucose to sweeten and syrup to soften. Then the gum gets a pounding even the mightiest jaws couldn't dish out. Huge mixing arms work the gum, blowing bubbles into the base until the load rises like the dough of some vast, sticky loaf of bread. But it's still a flavour injection short of something tasty. Carlos Ramirez is the production supervisor. Hoy estamos elaborando lo que es el eh, hierbabuena. Este, este sabor alcanza para aproximadamente 40 kilos, que son en tabletas 100, 1.200 tabletas aproximadamente. Spearmint flavoring is added evenly to the mix. 20 minutes later, they start to extrude long sausages of the finest gum. Once at room temperature, it's ready to be processed. The problem is that you need a mouth like a mammoth to chew on hunks like this. So a line of machines stretch, flatten and roll the gum into a more manageable shape. Finally, it's starting to look like something to grace the angry mouth of a football coach. The gum's rolled out into five millimetre thick square blocks and scored to make it easy to break into shareable bite-sized pieces. Finally, it's ready to face the ultimate test, Jaws. Mm. Executive director Manuel Aldrete is the brains and mouth behind Chixa. Muy suave. Mm. Toda la boca se llena de sabor. Este es el sabor de la selva. Muy buena consistencia la mordida. After Manuel gives the seal of approval, the gum is loaded up and sent to America and Europe. 
so the taste of the Mayan rainforest is available everywhere, from the other side of the world to the other side of town. Chew on that, amigo. Still to come, how do they forge fishing hooks strong enough to reel in monsters of the deep? And how do they construct the fantastic plastic creations of Legoland? Join us after the break to find out how on How Do They Do It?